Good day, my name is Katen Mazzokere and uh, welcome to lesson number one from my textbook, The Distinction Bound Student. Now in this lesson, uh, we are going to cover mainly, I would say we are in unit one, circular flow of an open economy. Then unit two will do markets, but it's not going to be covered in this lesson. Unit three, national account aggregates and conversions. Unit four, the multiplier. All right, so let's get started with unit one, lesson one. All right, so in this lesson, we are going to cover the circular flow diagram. Now, you've been doing this one since grade 10, uh, actually grade nine in EMS. You 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 covered this one, uh, circular flow. I'm sure you know their households, businesses, government. But then you were doing a closed economy. So now we want to look at uh, the circular flow diagram of an open economy. But nevertheless, I'm going to start by um, talking about the, 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 the closed economy. Then I'll go to the open economy. All right. So first and foremost, what is a circular flow of income? Now, uh, my favorite definition is uh, it's a model that shows um, or that illustrates how participants in an economy interact. So what is a model? A model, I'll say it's a representation of the real. For example, a toy car, it's a model. It it's not really a car. It represents a car. All right. So this one is not the real thing because we can't have the real thing on, uh, what do you call it? On in a book or on our screens. But what we can have is a model that shows how these participants interact. So it shows all the money coming into the economy and we call that injections and all the money that goes out of the economy, we call those leakages. It, al it allows you to see the general reason why an economy might grow or shrink. A country which trades with other countries is said to have an open economy. And uh, the opposite is a country that trade that does not trade with other countries. We say that one has a closed economy. So in essence, I would say uh, there is no country that does not trade with other countries nowadays. Maybe back then it used to be possible, but nowadays it's actually impossible. All right. So uh, what is let's look at the closed economy. I think we have already defined it. All right. So in this economy, we have households, we have businesses, we have government. Now, in this sense, uh, we, we do not have the fourth, uh, which we'll talk about when we go to a, an open economy. In this case, we only have uh, those three. All right. Let's see the diagram now, how it, and I'll be explaining it step by step. So households, they are the main participants. They are the consumers of goods and services. So we find them in a closed economy. The next participant is the government. The government is there mainly to provide us with public goods and services. And the main reason for that is these goods and services are um, non-excludable and they're also non-rivalry. So for that reason, uh, no business is willing to provide us with those public goods and services but a uh, government has to come in. So for that, you'll see that they collect tax. We'll talk about that um, uh, as we proceed. The next one, we have firms. So now these are the three participants. We have another participant, but it's not a main participant and it's the financial sector. That's why I put it in a different color. All right, so now what happens? Households, they are the main participants. They are the main consumers of goods and services. When everything is being done, it's done for the households. All right. So households, um, they own factors of production. There we mean they own land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. So they sell those four factors of production on the factor market. All right. To whom are they selling? All right. They're selling this to government and firms. All right. There we go. So government and firms receive these factors of production because they need them to produce. Government needs them to produce uh, public goods and services, and then firms need them to produce goods and services. And so in return, government and businesses pay 
for the factors of production. So depending on which factor you, you purchase as the government or as the firm, you pay, if you purchase labor, you pay wages and salaries. So that becomes income for the household. But in this case, um, you see the government pays. So this year I'm talking about expenditure first. So government will pay for land, they'll pay for labor, they'll pay for capital, they pay for entrepreneurship. The reason they pay is because they are not the owner. The owner is the household. All right. So land, households will get economic rent. Uh, labor, households will get um wages and salaries uh entrepreneurship households will get profit and then the last one is capital households will get interest so this then becomes uh income for the household now what do you think is the first thing that households do when they get their income all right the first thing is they pay tax and the answer is uh, and the question is why do they have to pay tax and the obvious answer is, okay, not just them. The obvious answer is households receive public goods and services. So they pay tax and in return, they get public goods and services. And it's not just them. Firms also pay tax and in return, they also get public goods and services. We'll talk about these in more depth or, or this should be the time I should be explaining the concept of non-excludability and non-rivalry. All right, maybe let me do it now. Now, if we look, we say number one, public goods and services are non-excludable. This means it is impossible to exclude free riders. All right. And then uh, what that means is uh, when, you, uh, when you use a public good, it is not possible to exclude anyone who doesn't pay tax. When the street lights are on, they are on for everyone, regardless of whether you pay tax or not. All right. But uh, if you are thirsty or you are hungry, you will walk past McDonald's. And even though you know that you are hungry and you know that uh, the uh, maybe Big Mac is going to, um, you know, deal with your hunger, satisfy you. And then the cold drink would uh, quench your thirst. Now, why is it that you don't just walk into McDonald's and just take the food because it is excludable. All right. So you will see that everything that businesses cons uh, make is excludable. The next characteristic is that public goods and services are non rivalry. That means consumption by one does not diminish consumption by the other. So what this means is when you make use of a public good, it is still available for the next person to use. But if you consume a private good that firms make, uh, that person's consumption diminishes per, uh, consumption by the other person. All right. I think it's clear. Right. Then uh, those households that are in surplus or we can call them surplus units, they save their money and this is a leakage. And those that are in deficit, they can borrow money from the government. The same applies to firms. All right. Then now what do they do with the money? The first thing, okay, no, this is not the first thing. The next thing that they'll do is they will purchase goods and services because you don't work for, because money, you don't eat money, but you have to use the money to buy something that you eat or something that you drive or something that you are going to wear. All right, so we then go to shops. So there we are approaching the product market. So we go to the product market. We go to the same firms that employ us. So we work for the firms, they pay us. But now why do we work for them? Because they want to produce something. So they, uh, whatever it is that they produce, households will come and buy those things. All right. So where are they getting the money? They are getting the money from the sale of any one of the four factors of production. Some households can have income from all four factors of production. Like you own land, you own labor, you own capital, you own, so, but some are just employees. So they only sell their labor. All right. So we then, that's our expenditure that becomes their income. And in return, we get our goods and services. 
so that's that's it now now what is it that you notice you notice that we have solid lines and we have dotted lines in my in this particular case all the solid lines that you see they represent uh real flow and all the dotted lines represents money flow all right now what is an open economy an open economy is the same as a closed but the difference is this one has a foreign sector so because of that we are going to now look at the, the, the an open economy so this i've already explained so i'm just going to add something which is the foreign sector so do you see that it has the same color as the uh, as the firms as government as households because these are uh main participants but the financial sector if so if they say list the four participants in an economy you must leave out the financial sector because they'll be talking about those four in blue and then the the other two they are only markets so don't uh talk about them all right so what is how is it that we how do we interact with um the foreign sector goods are exported so we export we make things here in this country and then we sell to other countries right so when we do that what happens is we receive money so exports are an injection and the opposite is imports there are things that we cannot make here in this country one of the reasons may be um, natural resources are unevenly distributed for instance oil we don't have oil because it's a natural resource and uh, we have gold we don't have oil so if we want oil yes we do need oil because we have cars because we need oil we'll have to import it from those countries that are fortunate enough to have it as a natural resource uh, so we then import oil but the opposite is money goes out all right so each time you see solid dotted line solid dotted line the solid is the real flow and the dotted is the money flow all right moving on uh, i've already explained this households are the main participants uh, and consumers of goods and services they own this i've said this and they sell these factors of production on the factor market we talked about this they receive remuneration from government and businesses depending on which factor they sell i explain this again with their remuneration they buy goods and services on the goods market they pay tax to the government and so on how about businesses they buy factors of production on the factor market they use these factors of production to manufacture goods and services you see the difference this one says goods and services you will see when we get to uh uh government you see it won't be goods and services they pay tax to the government now uh refer then the government refers to the local provincial and national government uh buys factors of production on the factor market and you obviously know what they need those uh, factors of production for they need them to manufacture public so the key word here is public goods and services that's where the difference is all right so they raise uh revenue from tax so they charge us tax and then they use the tax money to make provision of public goods and services so in south africa it consists of all countries of the world other than south africa this is the foreign sector uh, trade between the foreign sector households and businesses take place in the foreign market in form of imports and exports imports can be seen as expenditure for the individual household business and state Exports will then be income for the individual business, household, and the state. Now, the last one is the financial sector. This one consists of banks, insurance companies, pension funds, and the JSE. The money which households and businesses provide is known as savings. Spending on the capital market by firms is called investment. Funds from surplus units are channeled. You saw it in that uh in that diagram then surplus units are also are those firms and households in the economy that do not spend all their income so they save it all right 
then savers deposit their surplus funds into financial institutions the institutions then use the money to lend to deficit units we also call them the borrowers deficit units are those households uh, firms businesses um, that um, oh firms and the government in an economy that are looking for more funds. They are called borrowers in the economy. The SARB is a key institution in the money market. Right, then now, uh, the next thing now is the interaction. Now, this one here, you must be very careful. It's an essay type question and it's very, very, very uh, important. Oh no, it was, it's not anymore, sorry. All right, this one here interaction between the main participants now what happens here is when you are asked to discuss households as a participant it's correct to say households are the owners of the factors of production but when you are asked to say the relationship you have to mention two participants in one statement all right for instance if i say uh, a boy and a girl um, then i ask them uh, how are you two related? And the boy says, my name is James. You see, that uh, it's a correct statement because yes, truly, his name is James. But it's not answering the question because the question is, how are you two related? And then the boy, what if the boy says, this is my girlfriend? You see, now it shows the relationship between the two. All right, so if you say, Households are the owners of the factors of production. It's a correct statement that is in the textbook, but you are not answering the question. The question is, how are households related to businesses? All right, so to answer that, households supply businesses. You see, we already have households, we have businesses. What do they supply them with? With factors of production. So this becomes correct. Businesses pay, you see, businesses pay households. So already we see two. So already it shows us the relationship. So businesses pay households for the use of factors of production. Households buy, okay, households buy goods and services from businesses. Businesses, okay, participant there, supply goods and services to households. So it shows us how they are related. Ne? Now, how is how are households related to the government? Households supply, uh, they are factors of production to the government, which is the same thing as what they do to businesses. Then government pays households for the use of factors of production. Then households pay tax to the government. Then government supply households with public goods and services. Government subsidies uh, subsidize certain uh, goods and services to make them affordable to households. You see, each time you see that relationship, businesses supply government with the goods and services through the product market. All right, so now I'm not going to go through everything because everything now is clear. So you can pause the video and write some notes if you want. All right, so I'm also giving you the, this homework and I'm going to uh, mark the homework, like revise the homework with you in the next lesson so thank you so much subscribe to the channel and get more of such videos